LEDs, fake nails, heating, bending, burning, clay sculpting, 3D modeling, 3D printing, painting, and my first resin pour. This project has it all, so grab a drink and a snack and let's go. I was invited to join in on the fun in this year's Monster Bash by Taryn from Conjured Craft. Everyone got together and drew six random cards as a prompt for a monstrous creation. These are the ones I ended up with, and for some reason, I thought of making a giant lily pad. I thought it would be a good chance to test out sculpting with a pen tablet I got for like $20 used. I hopped into Blender with some reference images. This was my first attempt at a lily pad, and I treated it as a practice. Although, I end up printing a number of these for the final diorama. I start by using a cylinder with 128 sides, which might be high, but I like the smoothness it offers over the default. I extrude the base out, but quickly decided to sculpt the very bottom from clay, so I just modeled the lily pad itself for now. By duplicating the cylinder and deleting the top and bottom faces, I now have a loop for the frill, or the outer edge of the lily pad. Once I have that, I can use the solidify modifier to thicken the sides. The edges have this little dip on both sides, so I select opposing edges and move them down on the z-axis with proportional editing turned on. A subdivide surface modifier will round things out even more. I make some loop cuts with Ctrl R to reduce the radii of the top and bottom curves. Once that's looking alright, I apply the modifiers and move into the sculpting tab to remesh. Shift and R lets you decide the pixel size and Ctrl R remeshes the geometry with the selected pixel size. I'm sure I don't know the proper way to do most things in Blender, but it works for my uses. The grab tool makes it easy to move the mesh around, pushing and pulling. I use the inflate tool to bulge out the sides of the lily pad to match the reference images. With the frill shaped to my liking, I switched to a top-down view to make the perfect circle into more of a heart shape. You can press O for proportional editing and scroll the mouse wheel to adjust the range. Now is the fun part. By using the crease and draw tools, you can make designs in the model, and with symmetry turned on, things get pretty interesting. I remesh the base of the pad to an even finer resolution and start to draw the pattern. The pen tablet makes this incredibly easy and enjoyable. Though still tedious after a while, so I mix up the sculpting with adding detail to the frill. We want something scary but still believable, so I added something that could be thorns or teeth. The snake hook tool lets you manipulate the mesh quite freely, but you have to be careful it doesn't get too distorted. Let's go back to the surface pattern. And for those following along closely, you'll notice that I started over. I have a tendency to get too tiny in a computer when I model things, so I took a step back and I looked at getting the general lines right. I took another break and added the kind of vascular texture to the outer wall of the lily pad. Reminding myself that this will be a small detail and I don't need to make it that perfect. After completing the pattern, I curved it a bit with a snake hook tool and added some large teeth popping out of the crooked grin. I want these to stick up but not get too far from the surface for better printing and also for a more subtle appearance. We want this creature to be camouflaged as a plant after all. The last step was to hollow out a spot in the middle that will fit the lure. I need to wire an LED up through the base and this will make things a lot easier. The base was too thick so I bullied away some of it and exported the model as an STL after checking that it was all still manifold and ready to print. And boom, just like that, a bunch of lily pads have materialized. The texture came out nice, though it's a little hard to see when it's all gray, so I painted up one of the misprints and it really blew me away. These things are so cool and really simple to paint to a great effect. 
I'm planning on making a pond for these to sit on, so I started with a tray from the 100 yen shop that I knew would be watertight. It's made from ABS and just about as deep as I need it. I found some square beads that give me the perfect offset to eyeball the layout and continue my planning. I sanded the surface to promote paint adhesion, and I got rid of these little bunnies. I drilled a hole for the wiring and cut a little tube from ABS to guide the wires through to the underside. Since the tube and the tray are both ABS, I figured I could weld them together with acetone. Unfortunately, nail polish remover doesn't seem to be concentrated enough to do the job. I guess that makes sense in hindsight. Oh well, good old super glue will do the job. It's been a while, so let's take another look at those cards. The puppet, tentacle, and butterfly wings will all be used for the lure. I'm using this kind of wavy pattern as an inspiration for the swampy water. And that just leaves the holy arm and sponge hand. Oddly similar. I like the idea of this texture for the body of the monster that will be visible below the surface. Time for some polymer clay sculpting. I had some black and tan left over, so I just mixed them together. And it's stuck. I didn't think this through very well. More on that later. I smoothed it all the way around and used a small ball stylus to make voids in the surface. After that, I used a silicone shaper to flatten the texture down, and I think it came out perfect. The clay was completely stuck to the lily pad and way too soft, so I used a heat gun to harden it enough to pry the top off. Lesson learned. I needed somewhere for the batteries and a switch to go, so I modeled this base and printed it out. I ran out of black, so I had to reprint it in this blue PETG filament on my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, which does a really good job. I modeled this hole and a switch pops right in. All of the electronics are just bits that I had lying around, and it's kind of all cobbled together. Don't forget to use a resistor on the LED. Ignore the subpar soldering, and there we go, it's done. I remembered I had these super tiny LEDs laying around, and I decided they would fit very nicely in this application. I twisted the wires together and thought UV resin would have been a good solution to holding the shape in place. But as you can see, that didn't work, and it just kind of beat it up on the wires. I opted instead for more polymer clay and hardened it with a heat gun. I probably should have used something less brittle like this epoxy putty that I used to make a connection between the baked clay body and the printed lily pad top. This is really important to seal up so the resin doesn't seep through. On to the vines, or stems, I'll call them stems. I softened some round styrene rod and bent them into organic shapes that would allow all of the lily pads to be arranged together in the pond uh, around a central point. Oh, and by the way, don't reach across the table even when the heat gun is turned off. It's still crazy hot. Now that we've earned our battle scars, let's move on to the glowing butterfly tentacle. We need to diffuse the light somehow, and I wanted to make transparent wings. These fake fingernails are just a thing. I carved out a wing shape and glued them on to a bit of styrene rod. The wing designs are just done with a fine tip marker. And while I'm working on little details, I made a quick little flower from a few layers of regular printer paper and added a plastic cabochon sticker in the center for the monster's incognito eyeball. I reshaped the butterfly body and asked for some feedback from the customers. I think they like it. I assembled some frog miniatures in two different poses. And off camera, I modeled some closed blossoms in Blender and added them to the tangle of stems. This is where the flower will sit in the end. Now we're on to the painting and basing. We need some swampy colors. Hey look, a sponge! It needs more green. I found this decorative crafty gravel at the 100 yen store. Let's use that in some patches. A few different greens of my sawdust flock and ground up leaves. 
need to keep the monster's spot clear to glue it down after the painting. Hey look, more sponge! In my hand! And look, more sponge! If you haven't figured it out, I'm kind of cheating with the sponge hand card. I couldn't really figure out another way to incorporate it into my design. It's all just for fun anyway, right? While the glue dries, I brought all the parts to my airbrush booth and mixed up a green for the base coat. Everything got green to start off with except for the flower, which got a coat of white followed by a spray of magenta around the edges. I hit the buds with magenta as well before adding some lighter yellow green to the mix, and it ended up here. The lily pads were finished up with mostly dry brushing passes of lighter and lighter greens. The frogmen got the same kind of base coats, and I added red and magenta to the monster. I added some lighter highlights to the outer and upper edges next. I painted the teeth white, and then I tinted them with a little green to make it more subtle. The eye itself got a coat of yellow-orange, a slit pupil, and some tiny dots. Using UV resin, I stuck down the monster to the base, making very sure that there was a complete seal for the resin pour. I've had this two-part epoxy resin kicking around from over a year ago, just waiting for a project to try it out on. Well, a pond needs water, and this was as good a time as any to bite the bullet. If you follow other YouTube crafters, you've probably seen your fair share of resin pour failures, which is why I approached this material with caution. But, at some point, you just have to jump in with both feet. I used the whole bottle as it would ensure I had enough, and I ended up with a little extra, which is better than not enough. I added some brown and green alcohol ink sparingly to the mix, but I could have done with a bit more brown. A lighter or a small torch can help to pop the surface bubbles. And then it's a 72 hour wait. Yes, three days. I'm calling this resin pour a success. There were some bubbles that appeared later, and for this swamp diorama, that's okay. It hardened, and the clarity is great. Something that isn't great is the fact that I didn't plan the height of the stems well enough, and now I have to cut them down to the surface to add my lily pads. I used UV resin to stick them down. I also soldered the LED to the circuit, and glue the monster's eye in place atop the stems. Everything is looking good, and thankfully, the circuit still works. What's that? A tasty snack? And two little snackers? Only they don't know that they're going to be the snack. These little Bullywug models from Warp Miniatures were fun to paint, and I'm glad I settled on buying these after scouring the internet for all of the frogmen that were available. I bought them with my own money, and I'm not sponsored in any way, but I really recommend the models if you're looking for some froggy little dudes. Painting the eyes really brings them to life. And there you have it, my entry into Monster Bash 5. I was glad I got to incorporate so many materials and techniques to bring this project to life. Special thanks to all my patrons who support my crazy creations. And thanks to Terran for organizing the bash this year. Check out the playlist in the description to see what everyone else came up with too. See you on the next build.